I thought I texted you. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I saw it. And I, when you, the first text that you got from me, I was still in the middle of it. Oh, okay. And then I texted you. I was like, yo, we got to talk about this, yo. <laughs> what up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shaw. doing a very special episode on the Hawkeye series that I, I texted uh, Brian and I said to Brian we got to talk about this episode because this episode was fantastic in my eyes and and I'll say something that probably may not be popular but I think this was this episode was perhaps the best episodes out of one of the best episodes out of all the episodes we've seen from all the Disney shows that we've gotten Brian you texted me did you see it and I didn't know it was out. This is how, I guess, out of touch that I, I am with some uh, with with Hawkeye, not with the Disney shows, but with Hawkeye. And I said, no, and, I, and I and I went to go see it, and then I texted you like, "Yo, this 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 show is amazing." What were your thoughts after you first saw that uh, episode? Favorite episode so far, and I think I, I've liked this show so far. This show, this particular episode, I thought had three things that we had talked about before the show that we could see one uh, you had a prediction way back about what would make this show relevant yes was the idea of the consequences of clint barton being ronin for those five years and i thought we got a real crystallization of that mm -hmm. exactly with the echo backstory it was done really well yeah i thought like this was a good character intro to somebody who obviously this is kind of a backdoor pilot for her obviously mm -hmm. to get her own show mm -hmm. so that was one i also correctly predicted that you would have a piece of the show which would center on hearing and the loss of hearing and the yes. perspective of characters who don't who aren't able to hear and how they connect with the real world and a lot of this episode really focused on that idea but with a nice little twist of Hawkeye losing his hearing aid and therefore his hearing and having to deal with that over the course of the show. Mm -hmm. And then of course, number three is it is amazing what one laugh can do. And Marvel keeps coming up with original ways to do this, right? We, yeah. we always use the Thanos turn at the end of Avengers as like, well, this is the template. This is how we're going to get these big reveals and these big teases. And they mm -hmm. still go to it, right? Blade's voice, spoiler alert, Blade's voice at the end of Eternals. They still go to that playbook. Yeah. But then we had Kang. And that sort of kept us off balance because it was like, all right, now the big reveal is not just a cameo. It's it's a character. Yeah. And now we have, oh, we'll just hit you with it mid -se We'll take the Thanos turn idea. But we'll hit you with it mid-series yeah. mid-season yeah when that happened i was like wait did that happen i like went i heard it and i was like wait what <laughs> went back and i was like you gotta be kidding me. episode three spoiler alert you before you go further but yeah it's uh i just want to highlight a couple of things what a great job by disney and marvel to make you care about a character as much as we did for echo within the first mm -hmm few minutes i liked everything the little girl the the father and telling her stories and you just for many of us that are fathers and and and, and have been you know sons or daughters to you know and and know their father they, they you know you sort of pay attention to some of that stuff and the way they made us care about it was really well done um and it's like at this point right now is are we going to uh, there's people still out there saying oh this is it this could be it, this this is the kingpin this is the kingpin anything is, else that's not that will be a huge and major disappointment for those people out there just because it's not confirmed by hollywood reporter or by variety doesn't mean this is not the kingpin how much more obvious can they make it did they need to show him your show us his face in order for us to say that's the kingpin that is the kingpin stop it with the when this is not confirmed stop it this is the king. It's his voice. You can hear D'Onofrio has a very distinctive voice. You can hear him. When he laughs, there's no question who that is. And the, the way, you know, the suit, you know, that's his, like a trademark style of fashion. 
they clearly give you that it's a big guy like you oh, can huge. tell it's a big yeah, it's you a hear big his human. footsteps <laughs> yeah I mean, it is not an accident they're not going to yeah. bait and switch you on that it, yeah. and then the reference to uncle and if you know the comics yeah Echo, man it's like come Echo on. is the adopt basically the adopted daughter or whatever of of kingpin who then turns again that this is yeah listen i get the clues that could lead to a certain character being introduced but this was not a clue this was a introduction, albeit very slight glimpse of him. It was Kingpin nonetheless. Let's not get crazy and start speculating and going out somewhere in, in into this MCU verse and, and, and just think that Disney is trying to trick us at every turn that they can. It, it, that is not the case. This is the Kingpin. Yeah, no question. You had you also had obviously Uncle is referenced later in the episode jeremy mm -hmm. renner clearly has come across the or sorry clint barton has clearly yeah. come across the kingpin prior he he is aware of who's at, a, at the top of the organization yeah. which i think i wanted to ask you more about because i was sort of turning over in my head okay renner in interviews has opened the door to playing more hawkeye and you know what do you think about renner and charlie cox potentially sharing screen time yeah, you know, because it was clearly ultimately Daredevil verse in in some you know Echo is a Daredevil character, Kingpin you know exists in multiple characters, but Daredevil obviously a foil for him. And and if if, if Hawkeye sticking around in some capacity, you know, are we are we headed to a place where maybe you do see Hawkeye as this, you know you know a, a sort of porting character for a dare for a Daredevil part of a Daredevil season opposite Kingpin? I don't know. It just it crossed my mind. I was like, would those two guys have good chemistry on screen if that's a, if that's the route they went? It's possible. I think it's probably, who knows? I mean, because they had Loki season two ready to go before season one came out. Mm -hmm. So although we haven't heard anything regarding that possibility, I'd say we have to wait until we see when he dons a suit that he's that he looks like he's going to be doing this for quite some time. And who knows where his adventures may take him. I don't know if it'll necessarily be uh, on the east side. Um, he is a founding member of the West West Side Avengers. Mm -hmm. West, so Coast, West Coast Avengers. West yeah. Coast of West Coast yeah. Avengers. That's that's me wanting to see West Side Story. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> um. So we have to wait and see, but not anything is possible. Brian, I have to say, I like the tracksuit mafia in this one. They were hilarious <laughs> in this episode. It worked, right? In the yes. action scene, it worked. Yeah, we, we should talk about the action scene because I thought that was a highlight of this mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. um, we we, I, we had joked in the last podcast, they made it through two episodes without without picking up a bow, and we kind of were rewarded with, I thought, a very cool, well-choreographed yeah. fight where he makes some money shots oh, yeah. um, that only he can make. And that's the way it should be, you know? Yeah. So I, I loved the choreography in this in this fight. And I also got to say, I was not expecting Echo to um, have a prosthetic limb because I think yeah. that, that caught me off guard. When they added that to the loss of hearing, I was like, oh, wow, that's actually a really interesting dimension yeah. unto itself. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'll be curious is your, your reaction to the kind of first real action set piece because we get the fight in the warehouse or wherever they are yeah, translating the into yeah. the car chase that was promoted very heavily in the trailers. Yeah. Before we get into the car chase, because it reminded me of something, the action sequences in the in the warehouse, I think, were done very, very well. I, I liked, hey, um, what's her name? Um, Haley Steinfeld. I, I liked her action. She looked very good at what she was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and Jeremy Renner, when he picked up the bow and arrow and did his thing, that was amazing to me. That was that was really, really done very, very well. Him fighting Echo and when she stomped on his hearing aid is like, shows you, I like the way they quickly made you understand what her motive and what her, her intentions are yeah. based on what happened. They did that. We we care automatically, right, right, right away, and that she's serious, and and that she's very skilled because she was able to keep up with with Hawkeye. Hawkeye, if you've seen him in most of his appearances, he's able to take care of a lot of people other than Black Widow and perhaps some others. But 
normal people, he takes care of them very easily. With her, he had a little bit of trouble, um, especially after um, um, her um, knocking out his uh, earpiece. The chase, the car chase, it reminded me of uh, Extraction a little bit. Interesting. Okay. Um, in terms of the panning around, I don't know if some of that was um, green screen around them. I don't know. But it reminded me of that sequence. And, and then that sequence, look, it took us, it, I felt like I was in the game almost. Um, and, and it looked really, really well done. I think when you when it comes down to constant editing, I guess we get a little bit, uh, not confused, but a little bit taken away from the realism. Whereas if they do that one continuous shot of the, all that's going on, I think it, it, it keeps us immersed in that experience. So I think they did a hell of a job with that action sequence. It, it rem it's funny. It reminded me a little bit of Bad Boys. Um, okay. I thought the dynamic between them was kind of pretty comic in the car, but it, w it reminded me, actually, oh, yeah, Bad Boys yeah, yeah, too, yeah, yeah, when yeah, like yeah. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are having, you know, he's like, he's like, now you shoot, like after he shoots up the <laughs> dashboard by mistake. It just, I don't know, I had that vibe a little bit, but it was, you know, it was like a cool, cheeky way to also be like, here's all the arrows in his bag. Uh, and like, you get to see what they're actually for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was kind of, that was kind of neat, but that, that also the fact that he runs out of arrows too, which yeah. I think is a like key part of this is that he, he runs out of arrows and he, was, run out. He, he goes back to get the plunger cause he's, he, he exactly. knew he was going to need it. All yeah. that li those little details, yo, that's one thing, Brian, if you look at this episode, a lot of details, they were able to, to show us to make it look like everything made sense. There weren't anything to like, how did he do this? How he, they showed us how, how everything happened. Mm -hmm. Um, the banter between them was was I really enjoyed, um, and you can sort of um, now not well. How would I say you can believe the connection they they have, um, especially when his son called and she helped him. Yes, sort of walk him through that. And you can tell that that was the moment that it reminded her uh, of her father. And she's sort of looking at him sort of at in, in that lens because, you know, he's he's talking to his kid. And I guess that sort of moment reminds uh, her of her father. And uh, obviously the disappointment that he was not going to be there, you know, and his disappointment that 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 shot that sh that scene right there was beautifully done. And, 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 and it was and it was I thought it was fantastic. I thought that's yeah, and, and you get the parallel of you know, you start the episode with a echo as the child, not able to hear her own father, not able to hear the world around her, and then you pivot to the father in Hawkeye, yeah, suddenly not able to hear a child who has all his senses, yeah, talking to him. And, and I think that that that, cir that circle makes you, as I said, the way they've set up echo is ambiguous, right? She clearly has an agenda of vengeance against. Ronin specifically, yes. Yes. but you don't get the sense that she is ingrained evil yeah, in, in the sense that like, you know, there was a falling out, which clearly is similar to the comics with Kingpin because that's referenced uncle wouldn't be happy, yeah. which kind of leads you to believe that she is much closer to an Avenger than she is to a true supervillain. So I think that the episode really did a nice job of, of that, that, um, that sympathy. I did want to talk about the visuals because mm -hmm. I, I I'm on this with this show. This show, to me, and it's very seamless. You you referenced the car chase, which is one I didn't even pick up on. Um, this show, to me, is being shot very purposely to look to be a three D representation of a two dimensional comic book. Um, and it was it was apparent in the action scene, like when you think about when they slow things down, what Clint is doing, and you imagine like how it would be drawn. That's exactly how they would show Hawkeye in action, kind of slowing down to take the shot, you know, the impossible shot. But especially when they were in the diner is where it really hit me. So when the two of them are in the diner, usually when that scene, like if you think about it as a comparison, the diner scene from Heat, where Pacino and De Niro are opposite each other, you get a wide shot of the two of them at the table. And then every time one of them talks, you're over the shoulder of yeah. the other. So you see the back of the head, the shoulder, and then a diagonal in on who's talking. This was every time Haley Steinfeld talked, you were in Jeremy Renner's eyes looking only at her in a two-dimensional shot. 
and yes. vice versa. Yes. The only other time I really remember that being really used a lot was actually Silence of the Lambs, where Jodie Foster and Hannibal Lecter, they do the exact same thing. Yes. They flip it first person every time. But again, it's like if you were in a comic, you'd be like, that's how you draw it. You put the thought, this, the word bubble next to each one, and you'd go back and forth panel by panel. It totally stood out to me. It worked great, especially because he didn't have his hearing aid in. So you're seeing her just like talk to him and not hear what she's saying, but sort of hear what she's saying. Yeah. So no, that's what I mean. This this show to me is one of those where I think it actually rewards the rewatch because yes. they have a lot of these little ingredients Details, yeah. that you don't always pick up on the first time. Yeah. I, I actually I have to mention I like the the that that moment where she's talking in the in the restaurant and she doesn't realize that he doesn't have his earpiece in him. And it's like, that's him take because I ain't trying to listen to you. I'm gonna yeah. take it out. <laughs> Oh, I, I just, I just love the dynamics and how they're doing this, and the, the humor was much uh, better in this. And I, I just loved everything about this episode. Again, this is one of the best episodes out of all the episodes we've seen of other shows. Yeah, it flew by when it got to the cliffhanger ending. I was like, oh wow, we already done. Yeah. Now I did have a question on this. Has she ever said that it's actually the Duquesne family that she's connected? Because Obviously now he's going to cross paths with Jack Duquesne and in the comics, they have history. And I was trying to assess in this episode, whether he actually knew that Jack Duquesne was her future stepfather or not. I don't think Duquesne, the name Duquesne came up. I, okay. I, I it was just Jack. Okay. So it'll, when it, when we pick up from where they left off, if we do, um, that the, the words that come out of their mouths are going to be very interesting. Um, to sort of bear witness to, to see if they actually know each other from their past. I also like that she drew him the costume. That was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a, I mean, we know he worth, We know he puts it on because it's in the... So, small gripe, and you hate this stuff. They yeah. did show him in the promotional material wearing the actual comics accurate costume. So we know he's going to put it on, but um, they could have saved that probably. Yeah. But. yeah. You know, that's, that's, again, this is one of those things that... They, I guess these marketing people overlook and just do that stuff, but whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the show. Nonetheless. Three, one other thing, mm -hmm. three straight episodes. Now you, you, you know, you made that we last time you made the John Stockton comparison from a celebrity perspective. I think we can make it from a, a role perspective. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Renner in this series, three episodes in, he's a past first point guard. There hasn't been a single episode that's been truly Renner centric. Even in this episode, he is facilitating. Like in the yes. action, he's kind of there to show you like Echo is a really good fighter. Um, in the, you know, he he definitely is kind of promoting Haley Steinfeld as as the sidekick, and he's kind of giving you the exposition of like the tracksuit mafia and a little bit of the kingpin. Very little of this has actually been like truly about him. I'm curious yeah. if that holds all the way through. I would be shocked if it does, but he has very much been like willing to share all three yeah. of these episodes yeah but and how they've been able to slowly introduce aspects of his life in small doses obviously keeps us interested um and 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 it doesn't overshadow the other characters that i think that, that are supposed to shine um where now and in the future um so that's very interesting uh there was another I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you this. And people have been saying that the Ronin that was um, killing uh, the trash suit mafia back in, they, 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 don't ever, they don't ever say what year. They just no. go to that warehouse. It's within the five, but we yeah. don't know which one. Yeah. yeah. Fat Man's Warehouse, Fat Man something, which is probably another. Yes. At, at, at Kingpin. They don't show his death. They do a good job of not showing his face. So it begs the question whether or not that was actually Hawkeye that did the killing. Hmm. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if that dynamic, if that comes out and when does that come out? Because at the end of the day, um, if you've read the comics, I haven't, but I know that Echo finds out that it was Kingpin that set her father up. Not necessarily set her father up, but probably perhaps that faction of the Trash Suit Mafia up to get killed perhaps because of a botched job or whatever the case may be. Perhaps that watch has something to do with it, which Jerry, Jeremy Renner, as uh, Clint Barton mentions, not necessarily the watch, but he says there must have been something else in, at that auction that 
somebody wanted. So mm -hmm. I guess that starts off that um, um, quest to find out what else was going, what else was going on. I also know I went and double checked just on the from the calendar. So No Way Home is on the 17th, and the finale of this show is on the 21st. So from a from a D'Onofrio perspective, if they were intending to actually have him appear in full and do it in the finale and somehow if he has any sort of connection to no way home that could be compatible they would one would not be spoiling the other um i guess i would be somewhat surprised if he all of a sudden appeared like next week that would kind of surprise me yeah if that were to happen if that were to happen i would i would guess that kingpin is gonna have a, a huge role but I, I don't I, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. It's gonna it's gonna be very interesting to see when Kingpin shows up. I think it's gonna be a slow introduction similar to how what they've done now. It's gonna be these little instances where you see perhaps a piece of him perhaps this time even speak to somebody, they show the back of his head. Who knows? Head, yep. That could be. You know, so um but for anybody out there saying that this may or may not be the Kingpin, stop it. This is the Kingpin. Just like everybody knows that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are in Spider-Man. Everybody knows. Nobody's confirmed it, but everybody knows that they're in it. So stop it with <laughs> this has to be confirmed by the, the the Hollywood reporters and variety in order for us to know for sure. Brian, um, any last words on your thoughts on this episode? And what is it? where does it rank? Obviously, it ranks number one so far from what we got from Hawkeye. But where does it rank? as far as the best episodes of all the Disney plus shows that we've gotten so far? Um, great question. I probably, my first instinct is I still would have the season finale of Loki as number one. Uh, I think Kang and the way he's introduced and the way he owns that episode to yeah, me, yeah, I, I, the degree of difficulties higher and they pull it off so well. I got to give that, I think that's my top slot. Um, I would probably say, then I, you know, I think then I think the competition is probably between the eighth episode of WandaVision, which is the second to last episode, the fifth episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, and this episode. I think that's like a tier. Wow. I probably would have. What was the I fifth did, episode? A Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, <laughs> now I'm trying to remember, but I feel like it's actually well. Isn't that the one where he kind of has the the sit down with Carl Lumley in the house? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember that as being kind of like a seminal moment. Um, I think at the end of this year, we got to have a breakdown. Best scenes, be best episodes. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> year in review. A year in review. I just have a memory of being like coming off the fifth episode. I, the reason why I say this, I remember in WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier, we came off the second to last episodes in both shows extremely hot mm -hmm. and then felt let down in the finales. But the mm -hmm. high points of those shows were in the two um, two kind of penultimate episodes. Mm -hmm. The other episode actually in the Loki series is the second to last episode in that show is outstanding. The one with Richard E. Grant going out like a boss to get mm -hmm. them to Kang's. Yeah, 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 we yeah. kind of forget that because the Kang episode is so good, but That's that second to last scene. episode is a great episode with a great scene. Yeah, But this one's right out there. I think this one is probably in some ways what I would say it's the most fun. This was actually probably the most fun I had start to finish in an episode it flew by mm -hmm. it had all the ingredients that make marvel great in the sense mm -hmm. of it had the action the humor was not dialed up to extreme levels it had good character development and then you got the as we said with the, the way the kingpin is teased like you know just an a level slip it in there seamlessly to where you're just like holy crap did that just happen i just i just think scene by scene this holds up this holds up amongst the best episodes of the others scene by scene. I think it does what it needs to do each and every scene. And I, I that's why I believe I think I hold it for such high regards. Um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the, the next episode, man. It's like, oh, man, I wish this could just give us a bingeable, like do everything. Just do it once. Just do it once for some, you know, cause I, just having to wait every week for this is tough, man. Especially when the episodes are this good. 
I wonder if they will at some point, just because I do feel like the Netflix shows benefited from that. You don't think? The Netflix shows, like when Daredevil hit Netflix, it benefited from the fact that you could crank that season one and and not have to wait. Yeah, yeah. But I I think the argument for some people is that it's so quickly forgotten. I get it. Yeah, Yeah. it's not in the zeitgeist. It's not like talked about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Theories, they like that. I get it. I get that part of it. Yeah. Um, I hope people find this show because it is definitely much. So it's much better than I originally thought. It is living up to what I hoped once we kind of were getting the teases of what this could be like. I mean, yeah, I mean, listen. If they teased, if, listen, if they teased Daredevil and we get more, a little bit more Kingpin, this, this show has so much potential, man, and so much comic book. That's one. That's see. This is the thing we got to give it up to Marvel. Marvel doesn't stray away too far from the comics, man. They don't stray away too far. They might change something, and that's. But even the comics do that when they re-release uh, uh, origin story or whatever the case. They go back and they change a few things just to, I guess, um, um, cover those holes that they may have been in other stories. Who knows? But um, I can't wait. To, to 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 next week, man. I can't wait to next week. Um, one last thing, Brian. Um, I saw the 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 final episodes of Masters of the Universe. That joint was horrendous. Didn't get any better, huh? It didn't get the dialogue was horrendous. Was stupid. It was just, it was just bad, man. It was just bad. And it sucks because I thought it was it was going to be dope. I was looking forward to it, and it was just really, really bad. The dialogue was bad. I mean, I would watch it just to watch it. I wanted to watch to see to just see it finish because I don't think they're going to go back to the world and, and and keep on doing a series of this. But it's but they left a cliffhanger, so it might continue. I don't know. I hope not. And if they do, get rid of what's that guy's name? Kevin what? Smith. Kevin Smith. Get rid of Kevin Smith. Because he ruined it for me. He, he ruined He-Man for me. But anyway, Brian, your final thoughts on Hawkeye. Are, are, what are you hoping to see in the next episode? Oh, well, the obvious one is obviously now we get... I, I'm hoping that we do get rewarded with Jeremy Renner's history or Clint Barton's history with Jack Duquesne. That's the number one thing. That would be yeah. comics accurate. He's holding the Ronin sword. And I hope we get the kind of the... The, the twist for Kate Bishop would be that these two know each other and have known each other for a long time. That, that's the number one thing. I think the secondary thing would be, we are now starting to explore Bishop security. And at some point we know Yelena Belova is out there. We know, you know, Contessa is probably connected to this, right? So now we're into their database and somebody's on the other end that's kind of locking her out. I want to know where that leads because that obviously is, is vital. Three more episodes left. Can you can you believe it? We're almost done with this. It's nuts. And I can't believe that I'm I'm going through this show and I'm actually like I want a season two of this. Before the, when this show was announced, I was like, this is sick. This is a bridge too far already. Yeah. And now I'm like, man, you got me again. I want season two. Bring Renner back. But, Imagine we having these same conversations about She Hulk. No. <laughs> <laughs> at some point it will be too much and that's going to be the one <laughs> I, th- I think yeah I think yeah I think we get the air ball on this one but we'll see we'll see um, yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of episode 3 of Hawkeye I think it was one of the best episodes again um, I was just I fell in love with this episode um, they did everything right for me um and uh, let me know in the comments below if you saw Masters of the Universe and tell me what you guys thought of that. Go check out Hit Monkey. It's awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.